playing the best of yesterday and today. Your station, your music, 24 hours a day. of yesterday and today. This is your station, Writington Hospital Radio. Putting the English Red Rose County of Lancashire on the world's rock and roll map. Welcome to Lanky Beat, the radio show. Nice to have you on board and I uh, hope you're going to enjoy our little show we've got here for you tonight. Um, our guests later uh, are going to be Mitch Mitchinson and Mick Hannon, two well-known rockers from uh, the Wigan area of Lancashire. And uh, they're going to be calling in and giving us uh, a little bit of an insight as to where they came from, where they started and, uh, and where they're going right now. But meanwhile, we've got a little song for for you here. It's um, it's a, a wonderful little track done by a guy who comes into Lanky Cats and he said to me, uh, here, he said, Bill, have a go at this. Have a listen to this, see what you think. And I think it's quite wonderful. He takes Elvis off, no problem. Of yesterday and today. Your station, your music, 24 hours a day. of yesterday and today this is your station Writington Hospital Radio well thanks there to uh, Maurice Thompson uh, a lanky cat now then what is a lanky cat well lanky cats now establish themselves here in the heart of Lancashire just on the uh, junction 27 on the M6 here and uh, we're in a little social club called the Unity Club in Standish and we meet every two weeks in um, in the uh, little place, and uh, we put together some live rock and roll. She leave between three, four, and five live bands playing. 100 to 120 people turn up, and uh, we have a ball. And um, what we uh, do on the live music side, we back up on a, a website called Lanky Beat, which you can see uh, if you check into www.lankybeat with an K in the word there, L A N K. Ybeat.com, and if you check the uh, Lanky Beat website, you'll see that it's an archive of uh, getting on for 300 bands now. 300 bands that were probably on 
unaccounted for, if you like, considering the Liverpool and Manchester influence in the 60s, uh, we didn't get much publicity. And uh, that's what Like a Beat's all about. It's bringing us out of the darkness and into the light, I suppose you might be able to say. So, um, anyone uh, that's listening now and wondering what Lanky Beats is all about, it's based on Lancashire and uh, the old euphemism that used to be around called Lanky or Lanky Land or Lancashire. Um, it's a, a very fond kind of um, term used for someone who comes from Lancashire. So I picked up the name uh, Lanky. And I use the uh, the old Mersey Beat expression. So we got Lanky Beat, and that's how we put it all together. And now we have, wonderfully, the Lanky Beat radio show. And this next track will tell you a little bit more about what we're going to be doing in the future. <laughs> I take my way, that's the highway, that's the best Get your kicks on me, 66 Well it winds from Chicago to L.A. More than 2,000 miles all the way Get your kicks on me, 66 Don't forget we know that England, Barcelona, San Bernardino If you get into this kindly tip Go and take that California trip Get your kicks on Route 66 
Chevy 57, they're from Leyland, great band, and uh, they graced Lanky Cats recently uh, with a fantastic performance, and uh, uh, Diane here is uh, my producer, and uh, she does the sound down at Lanky Cats, down at the Unity Club, and um, the bands are, well, let's put it this way, they're very grateful for her presence, because uh, she puts uh, a kind of touch on the sound that makes uh, these guys laugh a lot and smile a lot on stage because they come down and afterwards and they congratulate her and thank her very much. And, of course, uh, that's because they've had a good time and they can hear themselves and <laughs> when they're on stage and that's so important for a band. When they when they do a performance and they've uh, they've done a good job with the audience, they're still concerned about the sound and, uh, and Diane here makes sure everything is A-OK. Okay, Lanky Beat, and where does this fit in the world kind of um, world's rich pattern of rock and roll? Where does it all sit? And um, well, obviously, um, we're a nice little uh, county in uh, England here, and um, we sit in uh, a lot of wet weather. We're very green and pleasant, and um, what we have uh, is a, a, a rock and roll culture that um, is quite underreported, really. Um, it's never been kind of um, um, really put together as being uh, of any kind of mm, description that might rival, say, for instance, Liverpool or Manchester, which is only 20 miles away, really, 20 miles in either direction from where I'm sat anyway on the junction of M27, uh, M26, should, M6, I'm sorry, on the M6. <laughs> and... Um, I think uh, we're the Cinderella's of uh, the rock and roll world. And um, what we do here um, on uh, Alternative Thursdays, hopefully now until forever, we're going to get the Lanky uh, Beat show on the road, as it were, uh, putting matters to rights. We want to say to the world, we're out of the shadows, we're into the spotlight, and this is where it begins. So we've got a track lined up for you now. They're from the East Lancashire. These are the 60s gems, and they're going to give us the locomotion.
If you would like to contact the station for any reason, feel free to use the phone line on 01257 252435. Alternatively, you can use the internal number 6361 with the permission of the staff. Or finally, you can text us on 079 091 97345. Across the wards of Wrightington and Wigan Hospitals, playing the best of yesterday and today, 24 hours a day. This is your station, Wrightington Hospital Radio. Well, this is uh, getting quite warm now in here in the studio, isn't it, Diane? We're, uh, we're getting into the swing of things and... Um, we um, just want to kind of um, recap a little bit on what we've done so far. We're, we're trying. What we're trying to do, obviously, is um, we're trying to kind of give you a flavour of um, um, Lancashire art artists and um, Lancashire music um, based in the 60s, obviously a bit in the 50s, 70s. But these guys and gals, they've kept going. They've kind of, um, they're making their way through life, I'm still making music, even if they started in the 50s and 60s. And this is what we've got now. And um, we've got, obviously, people like uh, Alan Parkinson. Um, well, Parky, he's, uh, he was lead singer in the Beat Boys. And uh, I met up with him about a year ago, and uh, he was keen to give me his latest CD. And um, I've t- I took it home, and uh, I, just, I was knocked out by him, because he's not just... Uh, a quality professional singer he's um, a great harmonica player as well and um, some of uh, that harmonica playing has got to uh, kind of be believed to uh, when you hear it it's uh, it's fantastic and the Beat Boys of course are a very big name in the Lancashire area and um, later on Mitch and Mick will be coming in to see us and uh, have a little chat about it and I know that Mick has uh, has brought it with him a uh, a track from the Beat Boys, their single, and one side of it's called That's My Plan. And, of course, Alan Parkinson was the lead singer on that particular uh, track. So um, here's one of his more up-to-date kind of uh, tracks that he's singing uh, on his latest CD. And it called, this is Parky's call, it's called Parky Sings, Swings the Blues. And uh, this track's called Knock on Wood. <laughs>
Alan Parkey uh, doing a fantastic job on that and the brass section as Diane pointed out to me oh, it's really recorded very well hasn't it it's, it's, it's some real quality isn't it and these are lanky rockers as you, you might call them and uh, and so the beat goes on as they say uh, that's the title of the uh, the next um, CD that put together by a duo called Shazam and uh, originally they were Johnny D and the Detours from Bolton and uh, that's where they started uh, more or less with the shadows covering the shadows stuff getting the Fender Stratocasters out and the Fender bass and uh, and doing a direct copy of Hank and his gang and uh, this one's a medley, and you'll, I'm sure that most of you, the, your good listeners, will, um, if you've heard anything like the 50s and 60s music, you'll recognise these tracks straight away.
Hospital Radio, your music, your station, with hits of yesterday and today. Wrightington Hospital Radio. My wife said to me, what, uh, what are you going to be doing tonight? What kind of songs have you been playing? What kind of tunes have you been playing? And I said to him, oh, you know, a bit of this, a bit of that, and uh, one or two little 60s uh, tunes here and there. And uh, he said, well, he said... Um, You'll be needing uh, you'll be needing some kind of sustenance before you go out. So I've got you some pies, seeing you going to Wigan. <laughs> and of course, she knows uh, she knows what I like. I love pies. I'm a pie eater because uh, I'm a Wiganer, you see. And, uh, and guess what? She put some mushy peas with it. Well, you know, what a what a gal, eh? what a gal. Anyway, let's uh, let's uh, move it on a little bit and. Um, what uh, we've got for you next and uh, lined up is, of course, another uh, authentic kind of um, lanky cat. Uh, this is where um, lanky cats gets together and um, uh, some of the bands that turn up, uh, uh, you know, professional bands. Uh, some are amateur bands, some are semi-professional, others are just scratch bands. Then again, you've got the uh, people who might want to just get up and do a little bit of a sing-song here and there. Chip in, <coughs> excuse me, now and again and uh, have a little sing. And this is the case with um, Trisha Lee. She said, Trisha Lee, I'm going to be Connie Francis. <laughs> On your collar, told a tale on you. Lipstick on your collar, said you were untrue. Bet your bottom dollar, you and I are through. Cause lipstick on your collar, told a tale on you, boy. Told a tale on you, yeah. Told a tale on you, boy. Told a tale on Well done, well done, well done. That's all I can say. Trisha Lee, eh, at Lanky Cats. All put together by a guy called uh, Mitch Mitchinson, who's the dear at the side of me at the moment. Yeah, and right. uh, welcome to the studio. And Mick, Mick Hannon. Hey, Bill. Welcome, welcome again. Um, before we get stuck into it, lads, well, uh, I've, um, I've just got one more track to play. Um, looking at our little... Um, soiree that we've had and it's track five for diane who's frantically waving at me over the across the studio and saying i can't remember what track number it was so here we go now then this is a band that's my band i, I know i have to indulge haven't I? you have to self-indulge sometimes haven't you my band we got together in the 60s and we were called the shims s-h-y-m-s the shims and um we put um a few years in as the shims and then we I left and it turned into tin foil and um, you know the kind of story that anyway we reformed came back together and um, we decided to put a commemorative 
kind of track, uh, set of tracks together, a CD, just a short one, just to so we could remember a little bit what, what we were all about because we never did it in the 60s, which was a big, big mistake. You know, we, that's what we did. We didn't do that. We didn't put the record down. We never got a recording contract, so we never... So I've never heard myself play until we went in the studio uh, and we put these tracks down. Now then, uh, it was from our stage show and uh, we put a Beatles medley together on stage and we put uh, six tracks together and we did them in 3.4 minutes. Was that three minutes, four seconds? Whichever is, is near enough anyway. And that's what we did. I don't, know anybody, I don't know anybody who put six Beatles tracks down in three minutes. But I've got track four down on the Beatles medley uh, for something catchy, which is the new name of the band. And uh, no, we've not got it. We've not got it. I'll tell you what. Uh, she's say she's frantic here. She's frantic here. That's the one. <laughs>
would like to contact the station for any reason, feel free to use the phone line on 01257 252435. Alternatively, you can use the internal number 6361 with the permission of the staff. Or finally, you can text us on 079 091 97345. Across the wards of Wrightington and Wigan Hospitals, playing the best of yesterday and today, 24 hours a day. This is your station, Wrightington Hospital Radio. Well, here we go, and uh, we've got uh, in the studio um, Mick uh, Hannan of the Trackers Band and uh, Mitch Mitchinson of several bands, and we'll call, talk all that through a little bit later uh, with you, Mitch, and... Uh, and uh, we'll kick off uh, first of all, Mick. Um, the trackers. What were what was that? Was that all about? What uh, what happened and what, how did it all start? Well, it started when I was about twelve years of age. Me and a guy called Alan Dwyer, who was both in the Scouts together, and uh, the Scoutmaster wanted to get a Scout band together. And uh, Alan played a guitar at that mm-hmm. at that time, mm-hmm. and I was on the washboard and things like that. But the washboard. It, yeah, the washboard. <laughs> and it, uh, it wasn't the scout band that the master really wanted. Yeah, yeah. Especially when he, uh, he heard us playing uh, this uh, first track that you're going to play. It was uh, a track from a guy called Marvin Rainwater, who was uh, an Indian, American Indian. Cherokee. He's a Cherokee. And Cherokee. He, and, and, he, and he played at the, uh, at the Sunday night at the London Palladium. And me and Alan saw him. Sunday night, London Palladium. On telly. On, on telly. Black telly. On black and white telly. Who, who, who was comparing that? You know, I think it may, it may have been Bruce Forsyth. Ah, yeah. I know. I know. He, yeah, I think it was Bruce Forsyth. I know. And so he, had, he had the band across his head. Um, yeah. But he played a guitar. It was a red Indian who played a guitar. Yeah. And this sound, what he had, mm. absolutely knocked us knocked us off our and heels. It changed your life forever. Didn't oh, it? Yeah. it did. So, and I had it, it, 1958, and we were 12 years of age. 12? Oh, and the trackers, oh, yeah. we, we kept together then. For a number of years, and the trackers started when I was fifteen. So the trackers became what a four-piece, five-piece, a five-piece band. band. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, with the traditional lineup and the lead, yeah, lead uh, singer. I, I was uh, the lead singer. We had uh, Alan Dwyer lead guitar, uh, John Harrison on drums, Austin and Lawrence Whittle on rhythm and bass. Right. Two brothers. Sadly, uh, there's only me and John Harrison. Uh, oh. What's mm. left today? Oh, the yeah. Others have passed away, and uh, yeah. so you were the traditional upfront lead singer. Yes, I was. Yeah, you know, yeah. like the, the the kind of original fifties style, wasn't it? The you know, kind yeah, of I would say I would say fifty eighty style. Ah, yeah, I know. Yeah. We're going back yeah. a bit, aren't we? Yeah, yeah fifty eight and uh, the, the Billy Fury and the Elvis Presley, the Cliff Richard, yeah. of course. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, six five special. Mick, one Mitch. one little interesting thing is that uh, a certain Brian Rankin changed his name. Pro to Hank Marvin because of Marvin Rainwater. It was Hank Williams and Marvin Rainwater that uh, he picked for his name. And of course, you the, didn't know that, did you? I didn't know that. No, and, no. And, of, and of course, the uh, the Shadows, as is, they changed their name from uh, Drifters. There was a no, Drifters, Drifters that's right. Yeah. 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 About, and so, we changed our name. The first booking we ever got was in Hindley Labour Club, uh, and we was called the Dakotas. Yeah. And three days after us. Performing at the Labour Club, Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas come out. Yep. So then yep. we, we we renamed the Trackers because John yep. Harrison and his father worked on the railway and that's how we got our name, the Track C- Curse, so, with double K. Yeah, this Marvin Rainwater, I must admit, I must have watched that same programme, but I don't remember Marvin Rainwater, but I might remember if we just kind of hear what he has and what he sounds like. It's on the mini disc. Well, what can I say? Of course I know that song. I know it all too well, and I'm sure you do as well out there. I mean, that's amazing. Marvin Rainwater at the London Palladium. Number one. It number was. one it number went, one record, and yeah. everybody's forgot about it. Rockabilly Hall of Fame, Ch- you know, these are these are the records that change people's lives. And what happened is then, it w- you know, people went on to to do what you know we 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 we've come to know as um, you know rock and roll, sixties music, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, and Mick and Mitch here, they've you know that's why they're here tonight. 
to tell us why it all started and how it all started. And, mm. and Mick, um, I, can, I can understand why it influenced you. Um, it, it, it did, along with uh, Little Richard and yeah. uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, and this was something different. And uh, we went on then to perform all over the country. Uh-huh. Uh, our our favourite place we always came back to was uh, the Monaco in Indley. Oh, and uh, St Paul's in Indley. Did you play with the Stones? Yeah, we played we play with the Rolling Stones yeah. uh, at uh, New Brighton Tower Ballroom, August the 10th, 1964. Wow. And it was uh, the uh, Cavern competition. Uh, for a company called the Rail Brook Toplin I remember that shirts. Yeah. shirts. Oh, yeah, the yeah, Nile and shirts. Yeah, Nile and shirts. Oh, yeah. and the winner, to... the winner got yeah. a twelve-month uh, contract, contract. Yeah. and uh, the Rolling the Rolling Stones run. It was eight and six to go in. I, I can always remember oh, that. Fantastic. Eight and six. <laughs> a lot of money then. <laughs> and uh, Mick Jagger, Brian Jones, yeah. Keith Richards, Charlie Watts. Uh, what's the other bass Bill player? Wyman. Bill Wyman. There's all the, we had. We had lunch with them. Oh. Uh, on a, on, we had to have a bank call and we all had lunch with them yeah. and uh, it was a fantastic uh, night well, yeah. there was hundreds in I bet there were thousands in the mine on. Yeah, yeah. and on that competition who won it? Did, you, did the trackers we, win it? no we didn't win it we, we believe we, we came second or third somebody told us we wasn't bothered we, we didn't win it no you didn't win it and there was a group from Manchester won it and well, I do believe uh, somebody like the Wyverns but I'm, I'm, it's a long time ago yeah yeah, but, yeah. Uh, we went on then. We, we it wasn't went a band that went thing. on to fame and fortune then. I, I don't think it was, Bill. No, but the, but no. the people in that band could have gone on to fame and fortune. Oh yeah, yeah. The, it the, could have been the individuals. But it opened a lot. Uh, it opened a lot of doors for us in Liverpool. Yeah, uh, I bet. We played. We played a second time at the Cavern, and, uh, and as you know, a few months ago at the age of sixty-five. We played again. And we did. So, <laughs> we did. Right. So from being 16 yeah. and 17, we played twice and 65. It was a long time before the Astros yeah, back, but yeah, uh, yeah. it was a good day. I know. Well, uh, Lanky Cats went down to the Cavern Club, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We all went down and uh, yeah. and we, we all replayed it all over again. And Get, uh, getting back anyway, to, getting, getting back, back to, to that, what, I mean, that, that's amazing stuff, and especially the Stones thing. Yeah. I love that yeah. because... Um, I never kind of rubbed shoulders with uh, anybody kind of as well, we play, rock and roll famous as that anyway. Well, we play with the Mersey Beats at one of our times yeah, at the yeah. Cavern. But uh, getting back to the Monaco, this next track you're going to play, it was uh, the, the last one we always used to uh, end with, and it was like... Uh, this, is, this was your last song of the set. The last song of was, the set. Was that the, where they all kind of got a grip? Yeah, they, that's... Everybody, uh, yeah, it they, they all got dashed got on, got the, on the all, dance floor, <laughs> and they, they, they'd yeah. been fancying them all night. That's right, yeah. And, and they, they, got, they all got, yeah. got around and gave it to... All the handbags used to get kicked all over the place. Nah, that... <laughs> and uh, it, was a, it was a number by Conway Twitty, which we, we went into a studio, and uh, we, re, we recorded four numbers in a studio in Manchester, we wanted to record this, and he said, no, it's too early. When was it? I said, 1958, 59, Conway Twitty. It was about 1961 then. Yeah. He said, it's a bit too early. Yeah. And I think, say, six to ten months afterwards, Billy Fury recorded it and got it to number three. Fantastic. And, well, this uh, is you singing this. One. But this is, is this yeah, me singing? This, the, this, this, I think the, the, the one that was made famous, because there were always covers of, of top no, songs, wasn't there? Yeah. There were three, three versions in the what top. What tickled me was somebody top said 20. that uh, if Ketty Lester married Gomer Twitty, she'd be Ketty Twitty. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. Yeah, yeah. So here it is. It's only make believe. The wonderful Conway Twitty. <laughs> They think you really care But myself I can't deceive I know it's only make believe My one and only prayer Is that someday you care my hopes, my dreams come true My one and only you No one will ever know How much I love you so My only prayer will be Someday you care for me But it's only me Believe My hopes, my dreams 
dreams come true My life I give for you My heart, the wedding ring My all, my everything My heart I can't control You rule my very soul It's only make-believe. And in fact, when I announced uh, before it was Conway Twitty, well, of course, it's a Conway Twitty song, and uh, but it wasn't sung by Conway Twitty. It was sung by Mick. Fantastic. Well done, mate. Yes. That, uh, what a lovely, lovely voice. And uh, again, a lanky rocker, eh? Doing it. <laughs> uh, doing it. I mean, uh, what, what are we like? Eh? I mean, in the shadows, out of the shadows... Uh, of the rock and roll uh, world, and now we're coming into the light. That's what I've one of the. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. That's what Lanky Beat and Lanky Cats are, are doing for the world of rock and roll. <laughs> anyway, next job. What about you, Mitch? Where did it all start for you? 1962. Um, some mates of mine from school um, went to the Amp. Um, how the hell I got in? Because we were only kids. I don't know the girl was in. We oh. must have been about 14. How old that, did he have to be getting the end? I don't know. Because they, they sold, did they sell beer at the end? The, ah, ah they did. I'm remembering now. They sold beer, but it was sold upstairs. And this if was you upstairs? were underage, right. according to them, you couldn't go upstairs. Well, we did. We oh, did. Then. Definitely went in. There was me, Harry Walsh, you know Harry, yeah, don't you? Yeah, well. Terry, uh, Terry Gagan, John Silcock. I think it was my birthday, which is November. Yeah. And... I had no interest in music whatsoever. Not vaguely. I, I like Telstar. You know, yeah. little things yeah. like little. Oh, I think that. Yeah. I think everybody did Touched that. Touched everybody. Like um, yeah. So much so that I ended up uh, acquiring a little organ which I potted about somewhere. I had no interest in music. So I went upstairs. Well, all three, we all went upstairs and the Beat Boys were on. I get me caught, you know. He just completely... Paul likes my company. I didn't think people did it, you know. I didn't think they played and sung, you know. Yeah. It was incredible. I know. And they sounded fantastic. And it, the front of the stage was packed with girls, you know. Yeah. And eight, the, nine, ten deep. Tight, you know? tight up oh. to the stage, wasn't it? But tight. the sound, you know. And I knew nothing about guitars then, but I can remember all the guitars that they were using, you know. Ronnie Kerr had a Fender Precision. Yeah. Um, Fellingham had a, he had a yellow... Les Paul, double cutaway, Lee guitar, special. Lee yeah. guitarist, uh, yeah. Um, this Malt, other guy. Malt, Malt Grundy. Malt and, um, a bison. A black bison, which he played a Van Aguila behind black, his head. And, uh, uh, they, were, they were brilliant, they were fantastic. I know, I know. So I thought, wow, well, I'll have to have a do with this, you know. And then the week later, might have been two weeks later, but no more than that, uh, the same guy said, we're going to St John's Hall. It wasn't the youth club then. Yeah. The longer the shorts on. Now... The longer the short, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think they might have been, might have been the Ringos. Then I'm not sure. Ah. But same again. They changed the name. They're diff different band. Yeah. I thought I'm having to do with this, you know. Um, so we decided we're, we're forming a band. So I bought a guitar for a five. I sold my Perdue Piccadilly Radio case, <laughs> case I miss a plus place, um, on, along with other things as well. Um, and I bought for a fiver an Antoria LG50, which belonged to Kelly Fillingham, which was a proud and joy. You yeah, know? I've no, still got it. I've no, still got no, it. I got it stolen. That's oh. another story. Um, then Harry Walsh bought a Rossetti Lucky 7 bass, 
wasn't lucky because he never learned how to play it. <laughs> Oh, that's what it was like, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It? We're all, we're all Bob Pendleberry, yeah. he, he bought a Broadway guitar. And uh, we had a guy called Terry Gagan, whose who's father completely refused to buy a drum kit. So we had two um, biscuit tins. I don't remember one being round, so I, I assume that was a Quality Street one. <laughs> so I've always been a bit of a dabbler. So everything, all the leads were taped together and banged into this... Fidelity Brema, I remember the name, um, tape recorder. None of us could play a note. We didn't know any chords or anything like that. And I, if I put it on pause and press record, then it, it came through, you know, like, 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 like in the monitors. Like it is doing now, yeah. So there was a bass, two guitars. Oh, no, we didn't have a microphone, so we, I, I remember I found out if you reverse wired a, um, a loudspeaker, you could use it as a mic. Yeah. So we ripped a... Yeah. It was in sacred art to... All the microphone. Dinner all. all the speaker is is a microphone. That's what it reverse, reverse, yeah. That's so we ripped a speaker off the wall and turned it to a high jump pole. Harry <laughs> <laughs> was singing it. And all you could see was his legs on the front. But why didn't I press that pause button and record it? Oh, you know, it would I have know. been fun. What a I felt like this, old, this door opened and an old chap came in. He just yeah. looked at us, never yeah. said a word, just shook his head and turned around and walked out again. <laughs> it was that bad. <laughs> but, um, like, I've Back just, to I, the Beat Boys, I mean... Uh, oh, they were, they were fantastic, I mean, weren't they, you know? And, and, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, I mean... Uh, and Ronnie, Ronnie Carr, he, he, you know... Uh, uh, Ronnie crops speak, up a lot, a lot with me. He um, comes, um, comes to Lanky Cats now and again. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're all in touch with him. And, well, uh, his, his influence... I pass across a lot, yeah. uh, but th that was definitely the Beat Boys that, that did it for me. Yeah. But there's a track that I've got on here, uh, which is number 25, Diane, which is... I remember learning with the... Wonderful invaders. <laughs> none, none of us could play. Well, it's Farmer John by the Suchers. Farmer John by the yeah, Suchers. Yeah, that was off, off an, uh, an EP that they did. Uh, right, with, right. Uh, what was it? Ain't Gonna Kiss You was on it. Oh, right. Um, and it was great. Fantastic. Yeah, we, earlier on, uh, before you arrived in the studio, um, we, uh, we were playing, obviously, some tracks, and uh, an Alan Parkinson track came up. And, mm -hmm. um, the lead singer with the Beat Boys. Yeah, yeah the lead singer, singer with the Beat Boys, and that's, you know, that's the connection, isn't it? I mean, Alan's still yeah. going strong. Not been well of, um, you know, a couple of years back, and, uh, but he seems to have come right back from uh, uh, what you would assume, uh, you know, would um, be pretty serious, but... and. Uh, He's coming right back, and uh, this is the kind of thing oh, he's doing. Uh, I when, mean, uh, and, and what about the harmonica playing? Well? Oh, yeah. When, you, when you said before, Bill, about the front man, and yeah. uh, Alan Parkinson was, uh, well, I loved Alan Parkinson. He was, he was the, he epitomised everything did, about, yeah. about beat groups. Yeah. He was harmonica, uh, parchment farm, loved it. Mm. I used to go in the Monaco and watch them. Uh, yellow suits, uh, Alan had a red suit on, or red suits, and Alan had a yellow suit on. It it, it, blew, it blew your head off yeah. when he walked in, and, yeah. and the sound, what they had, like Mitch was saying, well, with, with Kenny and Malk and, yeah. uh, and, if, if and Ronnie. Got, if you've got the sound, and then you've got the look. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's, I mean, that's, both, because, both guitar players were phenomenal. And, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, he, he, was going, he was going in the Monocles on Monday nights and watching Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. Yeah. That's right. Marty Wild, yeah. And what was it, the Wildcats? I yeah. Know. In fact, the, the, I think that night, the first night that I saw the the Beat Boys, it was Marty Wild and the Wildcats. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and then one. Joe Brown and the Brothers. Yeah. And then we had what we th we had our own local beat group because we yeah. wasn't, the trackers wasn't wasn't going then. Right. Uh, right. It was uh, the Beat Boys. What would this with be? Lo like? With local boys. But what? 1958, 59, 60, yeah. 58, 59, 60. And this, this is three years before a, yeah, a band called oh, The Beatles oh, was, was ever heard of. Before, it, before, before mm. there was uh, Parchment Farm. If you could get a, ever get Perky, Alan Parkinson singing Parchment Farm on Ronnie Curd, absolutely brilliant. It's oh, yeah. an old Mose yeah. Alice but, track. But we've, we've not got that track. We've not got we've that not track. Got no. that track. But but what track have we got there? Well, with, be, with being a local band, our local band, as you, as you can say, uh, and they made a record. This, the Beat Boys, they made a record and everyone, 
Oh, exciting was that? Oh, it was so exciting. It was unheard of, wasn't it? I That's can remember. Uh, it, it was unheard of. It, you know, getting it bed early with Radio Luxembourg on, just waiting for the Beat Boys record coming on, you I know. know. I know. Well, fantastic. And, and, uh, one well, it stood one... the test of time. It's absolutely fabulous. I know. That, I know. And it was produced by Joe, Joe Meek. Meek. Yeah. They, Joe they Meek. produced two uh, tracks. What you know, obviously a, an A side, a B side. And the B side was as good. The B side was just as good. And the A side is that. And that's what we're going to play in a minute. What was it? What was the uh... third time lucky? Third time lucky. Yeah. That's uh, it. I, I yeah. had a, um, yeah. a, a chat with the guy that wrote that. I think his name was Ken Gubbins. I could be wrong though. I think it was. Yeah. And uh, he told me something about that. The the, the They'd already got the date to record uh, the A side, yeah. but it was panicking because he hadn't written the B side, oh. and it was really it was last minute job, and yeah. there was a clock that went dang 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 dang. Oh, and right. he wrote it within like ten minutes. Oh. It just the, the melody line off the clock. So that's Unless my plan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my plan. Local boys, that's my. The plan. Beat Boys. This is it. <laughs> Test of time. Brilliant song. Can't fail, can it? And yet it was never a hit. Well, the, the, uh, apparently, uh, from what I can remember Ronnie telling me, that um, it was selling really well. Really was really selling well. And um, they had problems with Decca. Um, there was a strike on. Um, which stopped the, the records being played for that week. What, it's, a strike it's, at the factory or something? Yeah, something like that. And, and it said uh, something like the... Uh, there was a Liverpool band, Mojo's, I think it was. Mm. D- they got stung with it as well, yeah. with a follow-up to Everything's All Right. Yeah. So it, it was just a shame that that happened. And it, it's life, isn't it, I suppose? But so, because it went on strike, because they went on strike, does that mean they couldn't get the records out of the factory so. and into the shops to so. sell it, yeah. to make it into yes. a number one? Yeah, I think people were going into shops and, and they, they, nobody had it. Unbelievable. Mm. Isn't that is tragic? I could be wrong, though. I think, I, I think I'm more or less yeah, skirting yeah, around the right lines there. Potentially, that should have been a top 20 hit song. Yeah, well, especially with Joe's because, production, you know. Yeah, um, I, mean, I know. Well, uh, uh, Joe did some stinkers as well, you know, but I think he, he did. <laughs> but I think he, he committed to tape some finest recordings that's ever yeah. been done, like yeah. Crying Shames, Please Stay, you know. Absolutely. Some, you know, Absolutely. wonderful records. Yeah. Oh, you know. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that takes us down. It takes us uh, along and nicely moving along now. Um, we've got... Um, long and uh, Short. A little bit of... yeah, Another long local the, band. The Long and mm. Short lo- local band. The local um, Wigan band. Yeah. Um, they, to me, uh, were again... Were akin to the Beat Boys, weren't they? In the same, if, if I think, if the Beat Boys era. were the Beatles, the Long of the Short were the Stones. Right, that, fantastic that sort of thing. Well, that that's a great description. That good description. Uh, yeah, they, they, they fantastic. Were, yeah, I mean, an out lead singer. Pure rock and roll band. They they both had a, a five um, a five man mm. uh, lineup, 
Uh, they both had uh, a lead singer, and in this case, it was Bob McKinley, wasn't great it? Great rock and roll singer. A great singer, mm. good-looking lad. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, that was know, the first time I'd seen, days. like, uh, fan hysteria, that's the world, girls screaming, and oh, it was, it was fantastic. A yeah. girl screaming. Oh, yeah. And this was before... From local band, this. I'm like, God, I mean, how, how many years before the Beatles was this? I mean, Th- it, This it, would be around the, around, around, same time. around the same time. that they, they, That's they, right. We associate girls screaming... And the bands are playing with the Beatles, don't we? But not in Wigan, in, in St John's Hall. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where they were screaming. That's where they were screaming. They were screaming in, in, in I remember it all. There was a band on before them. Um, uh, I, I don't know what they were called. I think they had red suits on a sax player. I remember them doing Walk, Don't Run. Um, and I thought they were good. And th- th- they came on. They, they were just. Yeah. Th- there was a lot of screaming. It, the sound was marvellous. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, they, plus, they looked great with the leather. And of course, they went on to make several. Uh, records, didn't they? And, uh, well, I didn't like the second and Chalk Eyes. I mean, Jerome was Chalk Eyes <laughs> was the second one, but this one's the letter. Um, uh, do we associate another band with the, 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 the track? Not the, the same. Letter? Not the not, same um, letter. It's not the same letter. Oh, no, there's two different not, songs. Different going. Well, that was Box Tops, but I believe Sonny and Sure um, mm. recorded it. I'm not, I'm not sure where I could be wrong though. So well, let's listen then. See, learning all the time. From long me. and Short. The Long and the Short was referring to the haircuts. That's right. Yeah. Because two of the band had long hair, two of the band had short the drummer, hair. The drummer and the lead guitarist, let's say, let's say and Alan Grinley, yeah. had short hair. Yeah. And uh, as in, how uh, oh, short was short? Short was uh, square back. Square, yeah. Square, yeah. square cut. I mean. yeah. Square cut. Yeah. Square, yeah. And uh, Bob, uh, Bob Taylor. Yeah. And the keyboard player. I'm sorry, I forgot his name. Yeah. Uh, uh, they had all uh, longish hair. All long hair, and that's where they got the, the name. Same wig and long hair. Longer. And there again, the B sides <laughs> were great. Looks yeah. a funny thing. Yeah. Great, you know. Fantastic. And this is the letter. I'm writing you, darling. Letter, not the letter that I thought it would be that, uh, that Mitch mentioned there made, about the box top. It made the top thirty, twenty-eight, I think it made. Twenty-eight, mm. fantastic. And I know Bob McKinley. Um, he, he went on. Um, he, he formed uh, a band called the El Ringos. That was before. Uh, that was before, that was before Long the Long Short. Also, oh, I've got it the wrong yeah. way around then, completely. No. And then I know he went on to country music, didn't he? Yes, he did very well. And he did very well. And I believe Bob is number 19 in the UK all-time top country bat- uh, bands or artists. Number 19. So that is... It did an album called, uh, what was it, Wigan Wiganborn Dixie Fried. We're going to great time. Dixie Fried. Wow. Great lap, see? Wow, wow, wow. That's, uh, that's something to look out for. I wouldn't mind getting all of a few tracks of that and playing it on, yeah. Lanky, on Lanky Beat, wouldn't uh, Yeah, so that's it. And in that band, of course, was uh, Bob Taylor, who we mentioned. He was a copper. Was Bobby, Bob. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Top of Wigan, wasn't his director? Top of Wigan. Top of Wigan. I love that. I love that phrase, <laughs> Top of Wigan. 
And uh, yeah, when they had a uh, an officer on point duty uh, mm. before they put traffic lights up, oh, and uh, you know, and then if, if they didn't do as he told, he used to get off his little box, didn't he, and yeah. go over to him and shout at him. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's another story, you know. And, did, uh, did the um, we must broach on Goats Go Beat. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm glad you prompted me on yeah. that. The film. The film. The film. The the, the iconic. Film. Uh, it, it's made number one of the worst uh, rock and roll films of all time. You can't get any better than that. Oh, it's you? psychedelic, isn't it? I know. <laughs> I mean, number one at anything. Give me, give me number one. Give me Lanky Beat number one. I think know. they must have all been on LSD when, <laughs> <laughs> when they were filming. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd love to talk about Gong's Go Beat a little bit more. Well, it, that, you take a full, um, full it, program it, on it, that. Yeah, it, it was a film, uh, for, for people who don't know what the heck we're talking about, it was a film made in the genre of um, these um, cheesy rock and roll films at the time that featured various kind of artists in their various disguises. And I think one of the best one of the lot was, of course, Hard Day's Night by the Beatles. Yeah, then the, yeah like 5 day one that, ca- catches if you can. Catches as you can. Um, well, and, and this, they, they tried to... Just for fun. They just for fun. And, and Lulu was in it, yeah. and uh, the National Teens. That's right. They were in that. And, of course, they recruited quite a few lanky bands mm. into the uh, frame. Um, there was... Trolls. Uh, the Trolls. Uh, Julian and the Trolls, was it, or, or the Trolls? No, just the Trolls on that. Just the Trolls. The Vaqueros. The Vaqueros. Trackers. Uh, trackers. The, uh, Ray Lewis and the Trackers Lewis, from yeah, Preston. Was, yeah. yeah, I joined the Trackers mm. later on uh, when they were my and the Trackers, but that's another story. And, um, you know, and Speaking they made this corny film. The Vaqueros. I know, the Vaqueros. Wonderful Vaqueros. I know, I know. Um, and that's what, that's what happened all around about that time. And if you ever catch the... Uh, DVD of uh, <coughs> Gong Score Beat, you'll never be the same again. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the Vaqueros with know, my hero there. So, take us on to a little bit more about yourself, Mitch. Oh, I mean, right. you uh, know, uh, early days, what you know, what you were doing, the Invaders, and then you know, subsequently, what brands right, after well, that? Um, after the Invaders, I, I got friendly with Brian Rudd. Uh, who was later in Ipsos, so I started Ip- learning guitar. Ipso and, Facto, that yeah. was, yeah. yeah. Um, I started learning. Brian was a bit more advanced than me, you know, but uh, he showed me a lot of things. Um, and then I got with um, a little band called Faces Tickets, which was a mod thing, really. It was before Small Faces, the name, because the f- face was a mod, and the tickets was the suit, so I thought it was a good name. I still think it's a good name, actually. Uh, but the band wasn't. <laughs> but right. we were, I were playing. Right. I, I was actually playing. We did a lot of um, like Bo Diddley stuff, which was dead easy. So you could chunk all light on one chord and make a good... Right. No. right. Uh, we had John Gostello, who's um, in the Blue Notes. Mm. Drummer. Thank you, Cat. Drummer, yeah. mm. A guy called Kenny Hayes, singer, and a bass player called Dave Green, um, who made his own bass. He actually uh, made his own bass Made guitar. his own bass. Well, you couldn't buy him, could you, like... But um, <clears throat> unfortunately, well, they were very expensive if you did, didn't they? Unfortunately, um, when he made it, he put all the the frets at equal <laughs> increments going down. So we had like random random pitch. You know? <laughs> It'd be better off leaving it fretless, you know. Yeah. But yeah. We, it, we just made a big racket, and it was a load of fun. We used to play places like um, Saint Andrews Youth, Saint Andrews Youth Club, yeah. and um, oh, was it? just little youth club. We didn't do too many. Yeah. yeah. Comet. No, we never, we never got that good. <laughs> <laughs> the Comet Youth no. Club, fantastic. Do you mean this St Andrews? Um, what about the room at the top? No, this is that's this is what's starting. It's so the, the trackers then the trackers uh, folded. They didn't no, they didn't fold. They con- continued. Uh, Alan and I, uh, Alan Dwyer and I, we left and formed uh, a group called the Friends. Right. F R E N Z. Z at the end. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, good, nice little we, line, nice we touch. Was, we was four piece. Uh, we had a guy on bass called Thurston Hannon, call him Jimmy, mm-hmm. and uh, on drums we had Phil Maiden. And, Nutter. Uh, uh, Phil. <laughs> Phil always reminds me of that the guy in uh, the Muppets. Muppet animal. Uh, animal yeah. in Muppets. Oh, brilliant! Lovely, lovely guy. Unfortunately, uh, J- Jimmy. Uh, He's left us now, Jimmy. Oh, he passed away yeah. a few years ago. Tragic circumstances. In tragic circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, well. yeah, what a great. Rest what, in peace, then, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Gregor. What 
What a, what a bass guitarist he was, Bill. He was absolutely it was uh, way ahead of his time. Well, um, Phil... So, so, so we, 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 the room at the top then opened. We played there a couple of times, about three or four times, actually, as well as other, other gigs that we had, the Monaco and St Paul's and just do the same old, same old. Mm. And this room at the top, and the room at the top was somewhat else. It was right at the top of this building in the middle of the Market Square. That's right. And, yeah. uh, was it the Market Square, yeah. the bus station yeah. in, in Wigan? Yeah. And you walked up about four or five flights of stairs and there were the gear. Was that and all it was? Four or five? Well, I'm sure it was about it might, have been, it, might, it might have been a bit more. And uh, the room at the top. Anyway, it was only a four piece band and there was always something missing. We had a good sound, but Alan, fantastic lead guitarist. Jimmy Bass and Phil Lock Drums, very. Very solid and meaty, but there was always something missing. So I said to Alan one day, I said, We need a keyboard player. We either need a keyboard player or we need uh, an harmonica player. And we had a chat, and uh, Phil said, Phil Main says, You know that, that guy what come, always stands in the front at stage? With long girl. With long girl, like, and he's watching everything we do. And he never moves all night. I said, Yeah, he says, He can play the harmonica. I says, well, well, will you see him tomorrow? I says, Well, tell him to come to practice. We're practicing. We go and play at St. Nat's, Nathaniel's, St. Nathaniel's Youth Club at weekend. So send him. Anyway, we had a uh, we had a couple of numbers what we uh, what we used to do the harmonica on, and uh, the next track is the the one you want because uh, he joined the friends, and uh, that was 1960. So this was Mitch. This was Mitch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, long, the long heard quiet one. Yeah, the long yeah. heard quiet one. I've never heard old. him call that. But not, not as long as I've known him. Anyway. I actually told a little fib because I couldn't play harmonica. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I went out to ball one day after, and I had to, had to learn it by a weekend. <laughs> so it's, he was Phil's mate, you see, and I didn't know that. And uh, Phil the, told him what we wanted. Yeah. And uh, this is the passion here that we had when we were kids. When we said we just wanted to play and be in a band yeah. and be oh, yeah. world famous and have all the young girls. Screaming oh. and running after us. Now well, that's he, all we well, wanted. Well, he, he got there in the end. He got the girls <laughs> screaming at him. But that's, an, that's another story. We were very, very poor, and, and the only keyboard that I could uh, uh, afford, like because my dad died when I was young, was a little remember the little chord organs. Yeah. With, with a, a motor inside, oh, a little right. little dinky thing like. So I, I bought a accordion pickup put on top. When you turned it on, it went. <laughs> It was more more noise off the motor than what was going out, but it was going for. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll play it anyway. Anyway, yeah. so so from from the the only make believe last dance, we me and Alan wanted to yeah. do something else, and we we wanted to get into sort of uh, R and B and blues and uh, yeah. And th this next group, they they come from down south, and uh, they were something else, and. Uh, this is what we enjoy doing. I just with, love uh, this one. With uh, is this the, is this is, the, is this the uh, pretty things? Pretty things, and it's don't bring me down. <laughs>
from the inner sanctums of Wrightington Hospital to the world. <clears throat> well, to Wrightington and Wigan Hospitals anyway. Playing more of your requests. This is Wrightington Hospital Radio. And Lanky Beat on the, uh, on the airwaves at long last. First ever show, folks, if you didn't know that. And uh, we're putting this together for you. Hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're enjoying the chat that we're having now together with the... Uh, uh, Mitch Mitchinson and uh, Mick Hannon and Mick, we've got the um, friends to talk about now, haven't we? Yeah. Well, going back to uh, when Mitch joined, uh, it worked. The uh, Bon Tempe organ, chord organ, and the harmonica, it worked, and it in so much that uh, next thing we know, Mitch is on uh, on guitar. Uh, on guitar. And as well, it, as well, just, and the, just re- do, kind of doubling it, on ball. It, it really filled us in then. It, yeah. We could. Uh, get anywhere and go anywhere and play anywhere yeah and uh yeah. we did uh we did the top rank ballroom didn't we in preston oh, that was a day, that with the uh, with the uh, revolving uh, revolving stage revolving stage and uh, so, so just before you move on to that you did all that at the kind of room at the top right here yeah, at, at yeah. the top just to say to people there's a reunion coming up isn't there yeah at the of, end of uh, october yeah uh the end of october is that saturday night at the wigan cricket club yeah. There's a plug for you, John. John Winstonley. Yeah. Wintz. Uh, well, uh, you mentioned Wintz, yeah. and Wintz was one of our friends yeah. at the uh, at Room of the Top, along Good with Barry Hammond, yeah, so, mate of, so and he it, was in Julian and the Trolls. That's right, and, and they're they reforming. They were something else. Julian and the Trolls are reforming. 50 years on, and down at the Wigan Cricket Club. Really, tickets, uh, I think, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be plenty it's of tickets. a fiver, I think, the tickets. For a fiver. Mm. It'll be a great and night. And I think it's 27th Seventh. of October. So that's a, a little plug for you, yeah. Wint. Uh, uh, so just to Along kind of say, you're up at the top because there's a lot of rumours uh, around her in, there in, is, in yeah. the area who will be there on the night, and um, yeah. it should be fantastic. I wish you a lanky beat course is going to be there. Uh, mm. reporting back uh, for the show uh, later on uh, in November. But back to you, Mick, and the Friends. Yeah, mm. the Friends, and like you just mentioned, Julian and Trolls, and there was a hell of a lot of bands up there every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, wasn't there? Uh, I think Mitch has got some cutouts of us, I think, here. Two and six, when we was on the fabulous Friends, mm. and we were two and six to go in and watch us. On Sunday yeah. afternoons, are you talking about Sunday, Sunday afternoons afternoon as well? As well yeah. Yeah. Sunday yeah. afternoons. Sunday well, night. I used to get five pound uh, from work. I used to work at Norweb as apprentice, and I used to get ten bob, you know, spending money. Yeah. And we played at um, Room of the Top, and I got a pound. <laughs> Wait, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I was yeah. 30 bob left, you know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so we play this Poison Ivy. Yeah. This is one we used to do years ago. Yeah. So this Fantastic. is me and Mick. This is me and Mick. This is the friend. This is the friend. She comes up like a rose But everybody knows She gets you in the Well, you can look, but you better She's crazy as a daisy, but look at me, she's crazy. She'll really do you in if you let her get under your skin. Chicken box will make you jump and twitch. I 
kan en kolen poeien en hoek en klank en koeien. Als een kabel alom make you wish. Je kan er niet een losje. Of kan er maar een losje. You'll be scratching like a hound. The minute that you start to mess around. Poison and a Lovely, lovely tight harmonies there. And uh, this is you two working together now and uh, more up to date, of course. Yeah, yeah we and, just did it um, as a little project because we, like, we never had anything. We, nobody ever recorded just, that, that just was the same bit earlier like, on. Like, but. like my band, you know, we, yeah. we never did anything down, uh, down the line. But come, you, you made up making up for it and you've got um, a CD out tell, tell us a little bit about yeah, the, the Friends just CD one that we just did it for, for me and Mick really and then one we said that uh, we've been together like 40 odd years right and with nothing to show for it and so I said wouldn't it be good if we just uh, put a CD down like yeah. all our favourites what we used to do and what we'd, what we'd like to do yeah, yeah. Uh, again and uh, Mitch called it My Back Pages and it was a, I thought it was a great title and it's uh, for the friends and uh, for all the absent members of the friends and 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 it, it was uh, it was great uh, giving yeah. giving copies to the family. I know. And, uh, I know what you mean. So this yeah. was uh, this was what it was like when uh, yeah. with the, a modern day twist, if you like. Yeah. On the numbers we used to do back there in the sixties. It, it's quite a compact album as well, isn't it? Um, you've got so many. Uh, over 20 tracks, I think, oh, yeah, nearly, nearly 20 tracks. I think it's about 20 odd tracks. Yeah, yeah. I know. This I mean, next one. packed um, full. Um, I mean, the, the, the CD itself, um, at, uh, at Lanky Cats on Thursday night, it's for sale, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And uh, what we do at Lanky Cats, of course, is try and raise money um, as much of it as we can uh, for charitable and worthy yeah. causes, don't we? All the sales. So, the, the, that was kindly, the, you know, I must say that Mitch and Mick have kindly donated. Uh, CDs uh, for sale. So if there by any chance you might want to, you know, co a copy of it, you, know, you can be rest assured the entire five quid will go to a, a charity of certain causes. Which brings me to another part of what Lanky Cats are doing in the next couple of weeks, isn't it? And uh, yep. we're actually. Uh, every Lanky Cat night is a charity night. We raise money and um, we've been going 12 months now. And next uh, Thursday, Thursday night in the Standish Unity, we are actually celebrating our first anniversary, aren't That's we? That's right. Which yeah. is quite incredible. When we first started off uh, with it, uh, Mitch and Mick were there. Mm. Starting it off, there were 20 odd people turned up for the first meeting yep. on the 29th of September last year, which is... Uh, uh, just almost 12 months to the day, and um, like I say, we're, we're celebrating um, Lanky Cats being one year old, mm -hmm. and um, we'll be raising all the money on that particular night for the Wigan and Lee Hospice, That's right, yeah. which is a considerable, um, you know, carrying kind of cause as far as we are concerned. And uh, what we're looking for in the future at Lanky Cats is to do more of this, yeah. and. Um, now we've got 12 months under our belt, as it were, and um, we've got the equipment on the stage. Um, we've got the sound system getting almost right. Diane's putting us right on that mm. and doing a superb job. Mitch has done a, his share of the sound and, you know, the setting up. Mick has done a load of work as well. This is all unseen. Nobody sees this kind of thing. All they do is see four or five bands every time they come down at Lanky Cats. They don't see all this uh, work in the background. And I must say, a real applause to, to you all. It's, it, what you're doing is absolutely wonderful. And putting together all this enjoyment for people, rock and roll, getting Lanky Cats on the map, getting rock and roll on the map for Lancashire. And because uh, we've been in the doldrums for 50 years and now we're coming out of it and with a vengeance, I can tell you. So 
Back to you, Mitch. Um, what about Ipso? Ipso Facto. Tell me more a little about uh, about that band. I'm fascinated because they were one of my favourite bands. We had, uh, we were in a band, and we used to often, quite often, play on the same stage on the same night, didn't we? Uh, to two bands, and uh, um, we played something and often with a band called Ipso Facto. Yeah. Who happens that Mitch was part and parcel of. And uh, they are the edgy, an edgy kind of um, <clears throat> kind of um, feel to the music. We play pop music. We with the Shims, we play kind of pop stuff. You know, Blackberry Way about the move and uh, Mercy Beat stuff and uh, things like that. And he, even a Beatles song or two. Uh, but these guys, none of that, none of that. And if you're talking about if we were the Beatles, Ipso Factor were the Rolling Stones. Yeah. That's, yeah, I suppose that, that's pretty good. I think yeah. we were there in our first. First time we ever played at Comet Youth Club. I know. Yeah, it's good. Good that's arras, lads. Ah, oh, that's right. Good arras. <laughs> that's, a, that's an old saying, isn't um, it? You know, a very complimentary saying. I we used say. to do some good stuff. This 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 next one uh, is a birds one uh, that we used to do. Yeah. Uh, is this Ipso? Was it? This is Ipso. Ipso. Ipso this is this. me a bit. I've done it since. It's not actually. Ipso, it's a, I know, but, uh, but uh, this, uh, a song this is that... my back bit. My back pages, which is on the Friends album. And, uh, um, and I've always liked this, my, my love of 12 string guitar, and this is which has carried on ever since. Fantastic. Hospital Radio, your music, your station, with hits of yesterday and today. Wrightington Hospital Radio. Yeah, well, that really does nicely wind up the programme for the first uh, ever one that we've ever done. And um, I'd like to thank uh, very much Mick and Mitch here 
coming into the studio and giving us the uh, this wonderful insight as to you know the rock and roll life really and um, we've uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, um, Mitch, um, you've not been well recently, have you? Um, I've not been well no, for a long time. No, it was no. a long time, and um, I know you uh, appreciate the care and um, you've had from uh, the nurses and oh, staff. Fantastic. Um, uh, so, you know, it's about 20-odd like years when I, I've got Crohn's disease and right. other things as well. That, um, and from going from to Lee Infirmary when I was under Dr. Marnie 20-odd years ago, 1991, and then three operations at Swindley Ward, and, you know, under Sister Foster and the Little Angels, uh, absolutely brilliant. They're, they're wonderful. You know, they're great. You know, and I can't thank them enough. You know, that's fantastic. In fact, I'm going next week. I'm going to Hope Hospital to see about an operation uh, on my back, so I might be out of <laughs> out of it for a bit. But I shall return when I'm well enough. Well, all I can say is thank you so much for coming. It's been a pleasure. To well, it's been great for both of you and yeah. and you, Mick. Um, I know you're great pals as well. That's why I invited you onto the program together because I knew you. would bounce off each other no problem and you go back so it's your long way thank you very much to the pair of you and that's amazing and that's the, the just a, a, an inkling and a slice and a little bit of insider information about people like this in Lancashire it's a bit better than ever <laughs> excuse me I've just lost me now that I'm in the studio tonight I've got supporting and helping me is Zach thank you very much for your help and support Diane as always Fantastic. Okay, from me, Bill Hart, Lanky Beat, good night, God bless. <laughs>